Church. Hello. 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 and welcome to Christchurch at Home. A, a warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Um, we're going to jump straight into uh, worship together. The, uh, the psalmist encourages us to worship God in the beauty of his holiness and God is present wherever we are and we're, we're going to worship him together. So uh, I'm going to hand over to the Gibbons family who are going to lead us in our worship. The splendor of the King, growth and majesty, and all the earth rejoices, and all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to voice and trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How 
great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, thank you so much for leading us in our worship. What a great song. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God Almighty, you are with us, glorious in splendor. We pray in these moments as we uh, worship together this morning that um, you would bless us with your presence, you teach us through your word, and you join us together as your family. In Jesus' name, amen. So you've been really busy during uh, this very different season and we ask you to send in some of the things you've been doing. So we've got a showcase of those now. Enjoy. 're working our way through Luke chapter 9 section by section and today uh, Robin and Rosemary are going to read to us the next part of Luke 9. Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 36 the Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this he took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendour, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfilment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and didn't tell anyone at the time what they had seen. Thank you so much, uh, Robin and Rosemary, for reading to us. And in a moment, we're going to unpack that uh, passage together. But first of all, we thought you'd enjoy this very creative way of remembering the story. So I'm going to hand over to Sam. Today we are talking about the story of transfiguration. Transfiguration is a change in form or appearance and in this way we're talking into a more spiritual state. So, story goes like this. Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James and John, the brother of James, up a high mountain by themselves. This is Jesus going up the mountain. And with Jesus appeared the figure of Moses and Elijah. Now Moses and Elijah lived a long time before Jesus. And um, there Jesus was transfigured in front of the three disciples who had gone with him. 
and he and Elijah and Moses were shining a bright white light from within themselves. And um, while he was speaking, a big cloud covered them. There's a big cloud. And a voice said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And there we go. So, there we have our cloud, our Jesus, Moses and Elijah. And then we have the voice. Maybe if you have some fizzy drink and some ice cream at home, then maybe if your parents say it's okay, maybe you could try this. It's very tasty. So what we thought, and you can probably tell as we're sitting around the table, we thought we'd uh, have a conversation again about this. And uh, Simon, I'm just thinking about the trip to the Holy Land and uh, you've been to Mount Tabor. Yeah, we have, yeah. So this, this whole story of the Transfiguration happened at Mount Tabor and we had the privilege, um, we, we had to wait for about two hours at the bottom of the mountain because you can't go up by car. You have to, they have these taxis that, that do these runs. Um, so there you are waiting for ages and then, and then, and then what happens is because the taxis want to get up and down so quickly, they zoom up and then they zoom down again and you can kind of hear them in the background. And um, there's this kind of story that goes that God is particularly pleased with tourists who visit Mount Tabor and the taxi drivers because more prayer goes on in those taxis <laughs> than at the top of the mountain yes. itself. Yeah. Um, but there we were at the top of the mountain and we, we sang some songs together. We visited the little chapel there at the top and you just see this glorious view. You can kind of see for miles around Israel from the top of Mount Tabor. That's brilliant, uh, absolutely brilliant. And Jesus is there and he's praying um, and he's transfigured. Um, it's a strange kind of word, isn't it? The word tr transfigured isn't in the text, but um, yeah. But it, it, I mean, what does that word mean? Why do we talk well, about we, the transfiguration? We've used that word because it, it talks about the change of appearance, uh -huh. um, complete change. His face changes, his glorious splendour, and his clothes are like uh, bright lightning, and you get the extra visitors there as well. Um, but what does that mean for us today? Yeah, I mean, one way I've thought about it is, um, in fact, you can do this at home. Um, what's the difference between um, Superman and Batman? So these two super characters, you know, what's the difference between them? Just think about that for a moment. One answer to that is that um, Batman is, is just a human being but he has all these amazing gadgets that then make him Batman. So he's ordinary, okay. but he then kind of has these yeah, things that yeah. makes him super. Whereas Superman is, is super from the start. You know, he's born on a different, different place, you know, he's incredible. But he has to cover up his superness and he's, he's Clark Kent. And then occasionally there are these moments when he suddenly reveals who he, who he truly is. <laughs> now, of course, you know, it doesn't entirely <laughs> fit with say, Jesus. Yes. Because, you know, because Jesus wasn't just a, a, a superhero in human clothes, as well. You know, he's fully human. Um, he, he experiences all the things that we do as humans. Um, and yet at the same time, you can think of the transfiguration as him kind of peeling, you know, taking off the glasses, you know, revealing something of his true yeah. nature. Um, revealing there's more going on here and we've seen that in all the stories leading up to this but here in this moment we have is it Peter James and John just the three of them yeah get to see oh wow okay he's he's more he's more than just a human being I think that's lovely and um, actually it's those three there they were witnessing a girl being raised back to life again they're the only ones that, along with mum and dad who've gone in and here they are he's taking them up the mountainside and they see this amazing and then you get this weird appearance of Moses um, and, and Elijah, Elijah. Yeah. yeah. And, and in one sense, yes, it's kind of like summing up the whole of the, um, the law and the prophets. Um, what I love about Luke's um, account of this compared to, to Mark, he, he adds in that uh, there they are in all their splendor and they talk with Jesus about his departure uh, and Jerusalem destination. And uh, I think it's just really interesting that two people <laughs> From the Old Testament, who had very unusual departures as well, are there talking about uh, Jesus's departure, and it brings um, to our attention that this is the turning point. You know, the mountaintop experience. Uh, Jesus is going to be set to Jerusalem from here. He's predicted his death. Mm. He's going to do it again, 
um, and here he is talking about something which the disciples they haven't really got it at all yeah um, but in this glorious scene you've got that happening and it reinforces to us as it were this change of focus for the rest of Jesus earthly ministry That's so think, thinking about that because uh, mountain top experiences this is uh, at the top of, of the list of, of those um, and uh, yeah, we, we get them a lot in scripture. I mean, what's your take on, on that? Yeah, I, I, kind of time and time again, you see in, in scripture, it's on a mountain. So you, you think of um, Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. And that, it's on a mountain. You have the giving of the law to Moses. Yeah, Moses is it's here. on a mountain. Yeah. You, yeah. You've got Elijah on Mount Carmel. Yeah. Um, all these significant things happen on mountains. And then here you have on Mount Tabor, you've got this, this again, this incredible moment and we talk about mountaintop experiences don't we in yeah. like our spiritual lives in our in, in life in general these moments when God feels particularly close there's a lovely um, quote from Michael Quick who actually was um, it was a pastor of my church growing up um, and okay then became principal of Spurgeon's College and he talks about an experience when he was nine years old and his parents blindfolded uh, him and they took him up to um, up to the Cabot t uh, Tower in Bristol. I don't know if you've ever been there. Cabot Tower. Is that yeah. what it's called? I think so. Cabot Tower. <laughs> no, Cabot. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Mrs. Buckley, uh, Mrs. Kidding. Kidding. So there he is, um, taken up to the Cabot Tower. He's blindfolded, and, and this is what he, he writes as the as his parents take off his blindfold. Uh, he says, "The city lay below, the river danced beneath, countryside rolled uh, beyond, and the sea glinted in the distance." It was dazzling and brilliant as I stood there with my kid brother and my parents. Reflecting now on that moment, I'm fairly sure it was the first time in my life that I truly experienced being alive. Up until then, I had little perception of a world full of beauty, trust, love, purity and joy. But right then, its big picture just couldn't be beaten. Everything was good in the deep places of my body, mind and spirit. Astonishingly good. As I've grown older, I've had a few other experiences like that and definitely the best times have been in worship when I've known joining with others that I belong to God in depths of beauty, trust, love, purity, and joy. Now you could say not everyone feels that way about Bristol. <laughs> it's a lovely, a lovely moment. And yeah. you kind of think, yeah, there are these moments in life and you call them mountaintop experiences. Yeah. Um, when everything seems clear, when God feels close, when people feel close, when um, your understanding kind of everything kind of fits together and you're like wow yes I see reality as it really is yeah and things become fully clear and mm. that appreciation of those moments um, and it's, it's interesting if you think about the three disciples because actually um, it's it's when they're fully awake we're told mm. <laughs> that they see the, the the glory the splendor of the glory and there they are uh, we're told when they've got up the mountain with Jesus He's praying and they're very sleepy. Yeah. So whether they were just tired out by the journey or whatever, but then we're told they're fully awake. And in that moment, they can see his glory. And it would just made me think, uh, you know, what is it that stops us appreciating all that God is doing in, in those special moments that mm. we've talked about? Uh, what, what can hold us back? What makes us sleepy? Mm. Um, I was thinking about being so sleepy because you're setting in your uh, mind, in your own ideas, you're very set and you know how things are going to be. Or maybe it, we're sleepy because of our love of ease, this sort of inbuilt mechanism mm -hmm. that if there's an easy way to navigate life, we'll, we'll take that yeah. and we'll just steer clear. And, and what is it that brings us out of sleep mode? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like your television is on sleep yeah. mode, you press a button, bush. Uh, what is it for them? Uh, and I think in our own experience, sometimes it is times of great sadness or sorrow mm. we can suddenly be fully awake and aware of even glory in in those moments we had a, a funeral service this week and you, something of the glory of God breaks through mm. into that uh, moment and sometimes it, it's uh, when we have uh, something that's threatening to overwhelm us something that's beyond our own human capacity to to handle and I, I, I wonder it's in those moments that we come out of sleep mode and we're alive and awake to God and possibilities and what he might be saying. And you think about this current situation and you know, this talk of you know, there's more people praying, there's more people um, attending some kind of yeah. church online. Yeah. And, and, 
and you wonder whether, as awful as this situation has been, whether it has been a, a wake-up moment, uh, yeah. a moment yeah. to um, be attentive to, to God and to his world. Wow, there's a, there's a challenge in that. As, are we going to sleepwalk through this <laughs> or, mm. or pay attention to God? Mm. One of, the, one of the, the comical characters in every story, it seems, is Peter, who yes. just, just seems to get things wrong, even when his heart's you know, really in it. And so he's come out of sleep mode. He's alive to this kind of glory happening around him. Yes. Um, but it's interesting, his response, it, it's to get busy. He says, um, oh, how, Jesus, how about we build some shelters for Elijah and Moses? And then I love the way Luke just adds, it says in brackets, doesn't it? Um, he did not know what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he didn't know. Yeah, and that's so classic, isn't it? We can get so busy with it. We mm. want to do something yeah. um, that we hardly know what we're doing. But yeah, how do you respond to the glory of God? So you, you said about the significance of mountaintop experiences, but uh, these disciples, they are going to have to come down the mountain. They'll have to face the reality of life and all that life throws at them, mm. this glorious moment, and yet um, some of the, the challenges of life. Yeah, that's right. And, and I think Luke, Luke is trying to say something here. Um, if you read on, um, on to uh, is it, is it chapter 22, where you've then got the crucifixion accounts, um, you actually, when you compare the two, um, what, he, what he does there is he, he brings us to a different mountain. It's the, the mountain of Calvary, yeah. uh, where Jesus would, would die. And it's really interesting, um, uh, the way that he contrasts the two different uh, hills uh, here. Um, in the Transfiguration, we have, he talks about shining white clothes, whereas on Calvary, um, we talk, he talks about Jesus being stripped and his clothes gambled for. Um, uh, at the Transfiguration, he's flanked by Moses and Elijah, these Jewish heroes, um, whereas at the cross, he's, he's flanked by two criminals. Um, here we have the bright clouds, but then at Calvary, we have the darkness on the land. Uh, here we have Peter blurting out how wonderful Jesus is, and then... Uh, later on we have him denying Jesus. Uh, here we have the voice of the Father over the Son who he loves and then when Jesus is on the cross you have Jesus shouting out my God why have you forsaken me and you can see the contrast of these two different mountains uh, one of glory uh, and then one of suffering. Yeah um, and, and that's so true to, to life isn't mm. it? And, and so then you want to learn and listen to that um, so that there's something of the cross we find within the in glory <laughs> mm. but also this glory in the cross in mm. times of suffering in the sorrow that we mentioned earlier i think chini la, last week she talked about taking up our cross daily and, and that's a real challenge for her right now but also living in the light mm. uh, of hope yeah. And those two things, the two mountains, those mm. two hilltops, that's fascinating. I think it's, it's this idea that, I mean, someone said it to me this, this week, to, reflecting on something they'd been through in their life, um, saying, you know, where was God in that moment? And, and I think we have these moments where, you know, God was so clear there, but then, you know, where is he now? And I think th this is trying to say, you know, God is in both. Um, yes. F fully present um, in both the glory of like, the transfiguration, but also in the glory of the cross as well yeah and and i guess that means for all of us we're then thinking well okay how can i be aware of myself <laughs> am i in sleep mode have i got so set in my ideas um or just choosing the path of ease that actually i'm just in sleep mode and there's something about being present in a moment and that appreciation of the moment but more than that present in the moment and also attentive to God, that ear out to what he might, might be saying to us. Mm. And that's part of our challenge as we go from here. Maybe like Jesus specifically going to pray through something, that's a way mm. to be aware of yourself and come out of sleep mode and be attentive to God. But also actually in the daily tasks mm. and, and just facing um, an email and working through that. Um, listening and being attentive to him mm. in those moments maybe that's part of how we um, take that message of the two hills the two mountains mm. and bring them together so then we've got the challenge of of peter who jumps in to to do something and of course in our lives it's completely right to get practical when someone needs help you know we do want to do something um but that's not 
that's not always our response and sometimes there's a tendency just to get busy for the sake of being busy or or even just that there are so many things to do well let's just get on and do them uh, and sometimes we can miss out busy busyness kind of distracts us and keeps us from um, living life to the full that Jesus uh, came to bring us so I wonder what what is keeping you so busy right now that it's keeping you from God and keeping you from others as well so there's certainly some challenges in this passage but there's also that encouragement isn't there in suffering and and the sorrow maybe that you're experiencing God is with you and our prayer is for you and for ourselves that we would know him with us in those moments yeah. Should we pray as we as we end this time father thank you so much that you you never give up on us and even when we find ourselves in sleep mode or in busyness mode you're the God who longs to share something of your glory and I pray you would open our eyes today for each person uh, at, at home watching watching this would you open our eyes to your glory your glory in creation uh, your glory seen in one another um, your glory uh, as your spirit comes near to us and Father, I particularly pray for those who, um, who are suffering right now, uh, going through uh, all kinds of pain and worry, and um, there's this feeling of, where are you, God? Where are you in the midst of this? Uh, and Father, I pray that you would draw near now by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We're going to respond now by singing, I see the King of Glory. And uh, here you have those two different aspects you have the glory of God we want to see him lifted high um, but then also you have this line break my heart for what breaks yours everything I am for your kingdom's cause and so often it is the suffering we face the trials that, that break our heart for the things on God's so let's respond to this sing together Bye. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Each week we've had a member of the Christchurch family uh, share about their front line, what's been different about uh, their everyday, uh, what are the joys and challenges and then what can we pray for as well. And this week you're going to hear from Esther and then afterwards the Avara family are going to pray for her and for us as well. So in terms of the differences, um, I'm in year 13 and so in a normal year would have just finished doing my A-levels. So obviously exams being cancelled and schools being closed was a really big change for me, partly getting used to having a lot more free time, but also having to suddenly get used to not having a kind of purpose or a structure to my life, which um, was quite hard to kind of process to begin with. Um, I think it was a particularly difficult change for me because at the time schools were told that they were going to have to close. I was actually isolating with my family because mum had symptoms, so I wasn't able to go into school and say goodbye to any of my friends and teachers. So it was quite a difficult change to kind of process to begin with. There have actually been loads of really good things about lockdown for me. I mean, obviously, being able to spend more time with my family has been really nice. Um, another thing that I've been able to do is take over um, the cooking in our household. And so I've been able to try out all of these recipes, which I would never normally have the time to do. But I think probably the biggest blessing I found during lockdown was that I was able to get a job doing online tutoring for primary school students preparing for secondary school entrance exams. And it's just been amazing. It's, not only has it allowed me to start saving money for university, but also it showed me that I really enjoy teaching and it's just given me something to do other than kind of binge Netflix shows. I've kind of already mentioned it, but I think the biggest challenge for me has been coming to terms with this kind of sudden feeling of uncertainty, which the current situation has kind of brought for so many people. Um, until a few months ago, I had basically the next five years of my life completely planned out, you know, going to university, doing this course I'm incredibly passionate about. But particularly with me being in the extremely medically vulnerable category and therefore one of the shielders, um, I've had to really rethink everything. And most of the things that I was really looking forward to over the next few years have either had to be postponed or cancelled. Um, so a particularly big one of that is I'm not going to university this year, I've decided to defer for a year, which although I'm pretty certain that's the right decision to have made, it took a long time to kind of come to peace with that because I've gone from having everything planned and sorted and certain to suddenly not having anything really in my life for another year or so. An area I would really appreciate prayer on at the moment is kind of what to do with this unexpected gap year I've ended up with. Obviously I won't be able to do the normal things of travelling and potentially as a shielder it might be hard to get work. But I do want to use this time well and I want to see it more as a gift rather than my life just being on pause for a bit. So yeah, any kind of prayers for guidance and clarity would be really, really appreciated. Dear Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, for keeping us safe and protected at this difficult time with this pandemic going round. At this time, we just want to bring before you the children, particularly those who are awaiting their results, who haven't taken any exams this year, no GCSEs, no A-levels, yet they're awaiting their grades to be offered a place at sixth form 
or university. We just lift them up before your throne of grace this morning, asking that you will keep their minds in perfect peace, help them not to fret, not to worry. It's a particularly worrying time. Uh, grades are being awarded off assessments and teachers' recommendations and work done previously, rather than an, set of four, um, an exam at the end of the year. We just pray, Lord, that you watch over them. We particularly lift up Esther before your throne of grace, who is awaiting her A-level results for a place at her university. She's also shielding on health grounds. We just pray, Lord, that you'll watch over her, keep her safe, uh, protect her mental health so that she's not worrying or fretting about the outcome, that she can trust in you that what will happen will be your perfect will for her life. We lift up all other students awaiting a sim in a similar position and just pray, Lord, that you keep them surrounded by your Holy Spirit in peace, in perfect calm, and that at the end of the day, the outcome will be what they have hoped for and will be a good thing in the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we also like to pray for our church family, Lord, specifically our seniors, who may or may not be uh, still shielding at this time. Father, even though the country seems to be opening, there may be a requirement for some specific seniors to still be uh, alone and be out of the public eye. Father, we pray for them, we pray for their families. We pray that you send people, their neighbors to act at this time and, and be that uh, extra hand and helping hand that they need, Lord. Father, we pray for all of our frontline services, both essential and non-essential. We ask that you keep them safe, Lord God. We pray for everyone that is going back to work as the country reopens. Lord, you keep them all safe. Father, we pray for the governments and uh, all of the ministers and all of the people that are making the rules that we have to follow, all of the scientists and all of the companies that are working on vaccines. Lord, we pray that your will be done, that they will find something that can be used to fight this pandemic lord in jesus name amen amen thank you so good to pray um it's been a joy having you gather with us this morning online and uh, it's fun meeting people when i go to the shops and things who've been watching online so a real joy to have you um if you can join us for our zoom uh, conversation we've got coffee and catch up at 11 o'clock the details will be at the end of this video if you don't have them but uh, if you're not on, online, then just phone somebody up now and have a, a good old natter and catch up about the service and uh, just uh, check, check in with people. Um, tonight at seven, we're going to be lighting up. What else do we need to say? The, the last couple of uh, Christchurch quiz nights this week and the following one um, but tonight we're pausing to pray at seven just to light a candle of hope and pray for the light of Christ to come in all the different aspects of this pandemic so do pause wherever you are and just join us in lifting up prayers to God shall I do a final blessing yeah, yeah. Or a final prayer. Yeah. God of the mountain top. Yeah. God of the valley. Yeah. It's a, a final prayer. May the God of the mountain top, the God in the valley of our sorrow or challenges and suffering, be with us and awaken us to his love and his light. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, both now and forever. Amen. Great. Good stuff.